Attention riders, uh, we need Mark Whitehead and Matt Chambers, please pick your numbers up at registration. Mark Whitehead, Matt Chambers, please pick your numbers up at registration. Stars and Stripes jersey coming around over the top now. 
The man's only won eight national championship titles, I believe three this year. He wins, he usually wins two or three a year in various events. And Dave LaDuke showing his medal and racing speed out there now. Dave LaDuke and Steve Hill tied with one point each. Dave LaDuke still on the front. Steve Haig, 1984 Olympic gold medalist for Sung Kyung, SKC, on the front now. Steve Haig now on the front as they come down for the third point. Real close there, Steve, between Steve Haig and also number 21, that's Pete Antonovich. Pete Antonovich won that point, so we have a three-way tie, one to Antonovich. One to Steve Hill. And also Dave LeDuc. Down for the fourth point now. It's going to be Mark Whitehead. Mark Whitehead in that Stars and Stripes jersey. Mark Whitehead so far this year won four 1988 Knight Rider championships. He's won nine national championships. Professional track and criterium racer and Mark Whitehead. Now another one of the Sun Kyung riders. I believe it's going to be Sean Wallace. Sean Wallace, the speedster from England. Track and criterium speedster there, racing for the Sun Kyung SKC team, the world record holder in the flying kilometer for professionals on the front now for the Sun Kyung team, Sean Wallace. Sean Wallace picking up another point. So now he's going to be in the lead with two points. Bobby Livingston now on the front. I tell you, talk about a battle of champions. 84 Olympian in the kilometer from Riverdale, Georgia. Bob Livingston now on the front for the Bud Light team. Brian McDonough. Brian McDonough. Brian McDonough. Brian McDonough. Livingston teammate, excuse me, on the front. Brian McDonough, also a two-time national champion in the Madison event, racing for Bud Light, the teammate of Bob Livingston. <laughs> the Sun Kyung rider on the front now, coming down with two to go, points of three, two, and one for the final lap, and Sean Wallace coming through on the front now with two laps to go. Two laps to go. When they get the bell, the final sprint is good for three, two, and one point.
Mike's teammate and two-time national champion. You've seen racing here a lot over the years is Mike, uh, excuse me, Jay Osborne. Wrong one, that's Mike. Two lap and a five lap sprint heat. One five lap sprint heat. The first place rider and the first place rider only advances from this heat. The winner of this heat will advance to sprint finals. We have two more heats and then we'll have three. And hopefully the three fastest sprinters out here on the track today will be in the sprint final. Mark Whitehead on the front, a professional track and criterium rider world championships this year. And that stars in stripes jersey. Uh, here is just a real long sprint. Real physical sprint, much more physical than uh, a lot of the sprint that you see. The riders just push each other around with their heads and everything. Mark Whitehead already taking off. Mike Osborne wanting to try and take it long, it looks like, for Cycle Works. The two stars and stripes jerseys there on the front, but uh, well, three rather, they're, they're not teammates. None of these guys are on the teams with each other. Mark Whitehead kind of covering the front of the track there, making sure he's uh, up near the front. Four to go. Four laps to go. Now these riders can take off any time they so please, but it'd be a long sprint to try and hold it out for four laps against these riders. So usually you see uh, a lot of jockeying around for position as we're seeing now, and uh, the sprint is usually withheld until somewhere around the final lap before the riders just commit themselves to the finish line. Ron Hinton to the outspoken team there on the lower side of the track. Brian McDonough in the Bud Light jersey up in the front. Also Mark Whitehead up in the front. Mike Hatton from the Cycle Works team now. Accelerating hard down on the low side of the track. It's going to be two to go when they come around this time. And Mike Hatton really picking the speed up, followed by Brian McDonough and Mark Whitehead. Ron Henson and Dave LeDuc making up some ground. Get on, Mike. Really pick up. Only about a lap and a half to go now. Going to see some really fast sprinting when these guys get wound up, as well as all the sprinting. He's got some real, real fast sprinters out here. Again, one of the best fields of racing track riders in North America. Brian McDonough for the sprint finals. Matt Chambers on the front, followed by Steve Hagen, 
Sean Wallace. Looks like Steve Hague's going to try and wind Sean Wallace up. Steve Hague already on the front, really got a good lead, about a five meter lead over the rest of the field. Sean Wallace looking over his shoulder at the his other rider. Around the curve, it's going to be Hague and Wallace in first and second position. Sean Wallace. So we have so far Sean Wallace and Brian McDonough, and we're looking to get one more rider from our last sprint heat. Riders, if you'd raise your hand when I call your name, please. On the front, number three, needs no introduction, I don't think, in this town, Bob Livingston. <laughs> number six for the 7-Eleven team, Tom Schuler. <laughs> number 23, Steve Hill. <laughs> number 12, Curtis Tolson. Number 15, Meeker. Number 19, Vince Majoni. And number 22, Andy Woodruff. One neutral lap, riders. One neutral lap, roll it out. Bob Livingston on the front. Two of the, two of the big riders there to look for in that heat, obviously Bob Livingston. Livingston elected to leave from the high side of the track, kind of giving everybody a tour of the low side of the velodrome from the high side. He knows this track inside and out, knows where to attack from, knows all the little bumps and intricacies of this track, and uh, this is his hometown track, and there's probably nobody out here racing that knows this velodrome better than Bob Livingston. Staying up high on, high on the track so that somebody, somebody tries to come down and uh, attack, he's got a nice hill to attack from, from the banking of the velodrome. Three to go. Three to go as they come around this time. That's going to be number 22. That's Andy Woodruff. Trying to make a long one out of it. Andy Woodruff racing for the Vining swim team. Two to go, two laps to go. Woodruff and Livingston on the front, followed by Steve Hill. Also Steve Hill behind Livingston, also another real fast rider. Steve Hill staying, uh, looks like glued up to Livingston. Livingston, Bob Livingston has ride a lot of Kieran's this year and a lot of kilometer training, so he's got that, uh, he's got the top end speed you've always known about, but he can hold it out longer than he used to be able to. And, uh, He's not opposed at all to a long sprint these days. Bob Livingston kind of controlling everything from the front, looking over his shoulder, accelerating down the back stretch, kind of keeping his eye on everybody else, trying to make sure nobody gets around before he puts that final kick down the home straight. Bob Livingston, here comes the sprint. This is going to be a three-lap race, match sprint rules. Sean Wallace on the bottom being obliged to lead the first lap at at least a walking pace. Although Brian McDonough or Bob Livingston can take over the lead if they so desire and if they're able to take the lead away from Sean Wallace. It's a good opportunity to take a take a good close look at these three riders, the concentration, the preparation that they have down and down on the track surface. Also, maybe take a look at the bikes, see if you see anything unusual about the bikes, the way they're designed. These are pull-out sprint bikes. Three of the fastest riders around, the 1987 East Point Grand Prix winner on the front there, Sean Wallace followed by the Atlanta Georgia speedster Bob Livingston and his teammate. They've won two national Madison championships together in third position now wearing number four, Brian McDonough. At this point, still a real, real tactical ride. Uh, 
Wallerstein staying in the middle of the track, just trying to watch. Apparently, it looks like he's going to try and watch Livingston and McDonald from the middle of the track. Yeah, this can be the slowest race and the fastest race on the track all at the same time. Looks like we may see a little track standing here. Brian McDonough decides he wants to lead. Up and down, I got a tour of the velodrome. From the top to the bottom. Now we got a sandwich. The Bud Light with Sean Wallace in the middle. Wallace breaking out, deciding a real top-end sprinter, and Sean Wallace loves to take them long. It's going to be one lap to go when they come around this time. It's all right to be on the board. It's all right to see it. It's all right to holler for Bobby Livingston, Sean Wallace, and Brian McDonald. Livingston on the front, trying to hold the ball, and the track, and here goes Brian McDonald. Now we got Livingston and Wallace in pursuit. Drag racing down the straight. McDonald on the front, followed by Wallace and Livingston. But the real sister coming around. This could have been Sean Wallace. You have to start every race or you don't get paid. You need to be seen. Is that you shaking there, Stevie? Shaking, man. Yeah. That ben I'm, scared, I'm scared that Hedge will have the field three or four times this time. Uh, oh, distance. there you are. Hey. Yeah, I know. We don't know how many times. Hey, Francis. You, you call Katie? And they're off. Here they go. The unknown distance of race. This is going to go between 15 and 25 laps. Somewhere between 15 and 25 laps. Our top three riders now in our Omnium, Sean Wallace, last year's Omnium winner with 15 points in first, Bob Livingston and Brian McDonald with 11 points each in second, Steve Hague in third with five points. And they're off. Dave LeDuc and Andy Woodruff on the front. Somewhere between laps 15 and 25, this race is going to end, but nobody knows except our bellman. Steve Sperry and Andrew Woodruff now on the front. It looks like Dave LeDuc leading the charge from the field, and things really starting to wind it up. A couple guys with, uh, with low points or maybe without any points looking for an opportunity here in this race. A lot of couple, several different types of races going on out here today, several individual events that relate to the final, the Omnium where riders are gaining points or not gaining points throughout today's races. This is a chance for uh, some of the racers who don't have points to kind of get off the front and hopefully be out there in a good position when that bell rings. Imagine what kind of strategy you might be using if you didn't know how far you're going to be racing, kind of a twilight zone race. You don't know how far you're racing, neither does anybody else. The problem is, or the main thing I guess that you're trying to deal with as a rider, is to be at the front or near the front, but not be on the front. You want to be in a good position to be able to win the race up near the front when the bell goes off, but if you stay on the front for too long, then you use up a lot of energy, and uh, when the bell rings, if the other riders are nearby and they've saved their energy, then they'll be in contention to win the race. You've got a nice four rider breakaway there already and uh looks like some of the sun Kyung riders there uh on the front now that the whole field back together and a nice nice little lead with steve sperry andy woodruff looks like uh curtis tolson and dave lebuk uh, also something very important to bring up right now is that Throughout the Omnium format, laps take precedence over points. So right now we've got Sean Wallace in the lead with 15 points, but if, if these four riders or any of these four riders were able to lap this field, then those four riders or whoever lapped the field would be in the lead and by virtue of being one lap ahead of the rest of the field. So in any of today's races, 
Lapp takes that to some point. Bob Livingston uh, looks like we kind of jogged his memory or something there or something. I don't know, but he's hanging off like a wild man. Bob Livingston there on the front really is starting to roll things in. He says, good Lord. This guy has to get a lap up on us, and I'm sitting in second position, and we better get this train going. Bob Livingston, a real good locomotive there, winding it up for a lap, and put Sean Wallace on the front. Wallace has got a lot to lose if these riders get away. A real speedster with a lot of endurance, and he goes to the front now to pull the field up to these front four renegades, trying to get away with all their points. Six laps here, and this race could go another uh, almost 20 laps in the but these four breakaway riders on the front, it's probably at this point to their advantage, the longer the race, the better off they are, because it gives them more time to be able to try and lap the field. Now we've got Jay Osborne in there firing out of the field and uh, making up some ground on these riders. Another one of the Sun Kiln riders and uh, also one of the Bud Light riders going after these four riders. Jay Osborne going across the line now, followed by Steve Haig, Brian McDonough, Tom Schuler. That's starting to read like a who's who of bicycle racing, isn't it? Steve Hill here coming through the line there is kind of being dropped from this real fast pace. Dave LaDuke followed by Andy Wooker, Steve Sperry, and Curtis Tolson. Jay Osborne and Steve Haig now working together in fourth, uh, fifth and sixth position. Also, Brian McDonough there going down the back straight in sixth position. Nine laps completed, and there your front four riders as they came through the line this time again. Very important to remember that laps take precedence over points. And if these riders are able to take advantage of this field kind of getting tired out, the back of the field slowing up a little, if they can get contact with the back rider in the main field, then there would be a lap up on the field, and the, the whole points format really changes. Then it really puts the pressure on these other riders to make sure that they pick up a lap at some other point in the, in the yeah. race schedule. The leaders on the track now in the back section of the course, the four riders going by the BSW post. Also, Steve Haig and Jay Osborne working together trying to make up the rest of the gap that they have on these four riders. Sung Kyung now on the front being led by, uh, it's gonna have to be Sean Wallace. Hagen Osborne still sitting back about 15 meters or so Pick off these up, four Chris. riders, but it looks like they're going to push it on up a little bit and gain contact with these front four riders. Twelve laps completed as they come around this time. Again, somewhere between 15 and 25 to strengthen in. Now we've got six riders on the front. We've got a little extra horsepower with the addition of Steve Haig and Jay Osborne, two excellent pursuit riders, and that's essentially what's going on right now with these six riders. It's kind of a six-rider team pursuit against the field. Tom Schuler for the 7-Eleven team now in the front, followed by Sean Wallace. Haig looking across the track to see where the rest of these riders are. 13 laps completed. completed this time as they come around the curve and down the straightaway we could end up anywhere between laps one more lap and 11 more laps about not quite a half lap of lead these six riders have over the rest of the field Mike Hatton for the cycle run team now making a charge deciding he wants to go up into the front group I believe that's going to be Brian McDonough for the Bud Light there the second place rider from the field going out on the front on this bone chase, 15 to go and no bell yet. Again, we're inside the twilight zone somewhere. Any lap now, that bell could ring. Keep in mind now, any lap that these guys come around, these front three riders going through third curve right now and coming into the fourth curve down the home straight, they could get the bell at any time. Not yet. But this isn't the time. Really hot pace there. These front three riders have uh, kind of blown up. It looks like uh, Dave LeFou, Curtis Tolson, and Steve Perry 
finding himself off the back. Uh, Andy Woodruff, Jay Osborne, Steve Haig, I believe now going to be the front three riders with Dave Lethuk in that Stars and Stripes jersey kind of dangling about five meters off the back. And this is going to be it. Jay! That's it. Jay Osborne, big national, big hero here locally with the uh, fans, two-time national champion there, Jay Osborne. He's in that group, lead group of three riders as they come around the last curve and down the home straight now. Is this going to be the loud? The bellman stands back, not yet. Well, notice now, these guys are getting the field in their straightaway. They got possibly seven laps to go. They've got the field in the same straights. Field seems to be slowing down a little. These guys have really been pouring the pedal in the middle. As you've evidenced by these guys uh, had six riders on the front at one time. Now we're down to three because they're going so high. Oh, boy, Jay. Apparently they're trying to lap the field that they blew up three of their riders. Now Andy Woodruff, Jay Osborne, and Steve Hay really making up ground on the rest of this field. It may just, just may come down to how many laps this race goes is whether or not these three riders are able to put a lap on this field. Here they come this time. At this point, they probably, if they're feeling good together, they may not want to hear the bell. The last 20 there, looking over their shoulders, still working together to feel all the riders in the field, except for maybe the ones that have some teammates here in this breakaway, probably don't want to see these riders lap the field because that would put them a lap down on these four riders. For the guys on the back stretch are on the bell lot now. Now we have one lap to go for the riders coming through the line. One to go to the field. Shula and Livingston. Shula and Livingston and uh, Mark Whitehead. Here comes the sprint. And it's going to be Steve Hay followed by Jay Austin and Andy Rivers. It looks like. Also a big four up sprint coming around the curve now. And then turn your attention to the home straight. The big guns breaking it out. That's going to be Whitehead, Shooter, and Livingston. Look real close. I believe it looked like Livingston edging out Mark Whitehead. A real close contact there on that uh, last lap. Again, unofficially there we had Steve Hague for the Sung Kyung SKC team as the winner, raising his hand as he comes through this time. As soon as we've got the uh, official results, we're going to be announcing those. For how many points going into that race, we have Sean Wallace in first with 15, very close behind is Bob Livingston and Brian McDonald with 11 points each. Also, Steve. Roll it out, riders. One day for loud. One day for loud, riders. Roll it out. This is a real interesting race, the missing out race. We're on a neutral lap right now, but we're riding everybody is together when they come around. They're going to fire the gun. We're going to get a start, and every single lap, we're going to pull the last rider to cross the line each lap until we get down to three riders. Then there'll be two laps to go for the win of the missing out. And we're off. Matt Chambers on the front. John Wallace on the front. Really a hot, fast race. You're going to see a really fast race here in the missing out race with the riders in the front trying to keep the speed up and stay in the front so they don't they can keep a steady momentum, a steady effort all the way through. And the sprinting is actually going to be going on for a while in the back of the field. 
His riders from the back try and sprint to make sure that they are able to get by somebody and see Ferry signals himself out. He said, I'm out of here. Sean Wallace and Steve Haig, Mark Whitehead, Jay Osborne, some of the figures I'm seeing up in the front of the field. <coughs> Again, a really hot, fast pace. Chris Hines from Alabama looking over his shoulder and uh, he's out of there. Chris is a, a hill climbing specialist. He's, <laughs> he, li he likes a lot of hills. And he's the second rider out. Last rider to cross the line each time is out of the race. Kind of a cool race, but uh, not if you're on the bike. Number 11, Ron Henson. Ron Henson's out. Racing for the Outspoken Sport Team. Coming back from a uh, broken hip that he injured in a Kieran race at another track. Ran into a holder and uh, just, just hit wrong and broke his hip. And he's trying to find his form again that we're used to seeing Ron Henson with. And again, the sprint in the back of the field, it looks like Matt Chambers. So Cycle Works riders in the front really going to make this a hard, fast race and try and burn some of these speedsters up. It's starting to get kind of easy to pick. Usually you have sprints in the back of the field. These guys are forcing the pace so hard in the front. Guys are just coming off every lap. That's going to be Steve Hill. You see those riders kind of peeling off the back of the pack. That's showing that the, the, the race pace is so fast, they can't even hold a draft to stay on another rider's wheel, let alone be in contention for the sprint when they come around to the line. Makes it real tough when you're in the back of the pants to pack because it's such a seesaw back and forth. Number 18, Dean Barrioff. Dean Barrioff is out. Really tough in the back of the field there because you're getting the uh, accordion effect. You're rubber banding back and forth, back and forth, and your race pace just keeps changing from real fast to almost real fast to as hard as you can go and back and forth. Whereas the riders in the middle of the field in the front are keeping more of a consistent, steady effort all the way through. Number 14, Philip Stevens. Philip Stevens is out. The top riders for points so far in the Omni and still collected way up in the front. That's Livingston, Wallace, and Haig. 20, Mike Osborne. Mike Osborne's out. Pull a ride, another rider each lap until we get down to three laps to go. Number 10, Jay Osborne. Jay Osborne is out. Looks like about 11 riders left in the field. We're going to have to pull about eight more until we get down to the final three riders in the missing out race. Who's it going to be this time? Number 19, Vince Majoni. Vince Majoni is out. That was a real close. That was a razor there with Vince Majoni and Bob Livingston there on the back. That was a, a sprinter's razor. Livingston loves to do that kind of thing. Just kind of win by about a tire length and hope the officials can judge it that close. 22, Andy Woodruff. Andy Woodruff is out. This race also, besides the missing out, it's also called Devil Take the Hindmost. And now uh, you can kind of be a devil in the back of the field and kind of raise for everybody and then kind of just let the guys in the front forget about you. Maybe what Livingston's trying to do, let them forget about you and then slide on up when the race action gets a little thicker. Curtis Tolson. Curtis Tolson is out. Come on, beat it. Notice how each lap it seems the race is 
getting faster each lap, a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, as every time around the adrenaline gets pumped in a little bit, the guys that are still left in still hanging in there. And Bobby Livingston's out. <laughs> Seven riders left. All seven riders, this last place rider is going to get one point. It comes out this time, and who's it going to be? Number 15, Pat Baker. Pat Baker is out. We're down to six riders. Mike Hatton is out. Number 17, Mike Hatton is out. It's a pretty aggressive riding there with the riders left in the field with Mark Whitehead on the front. A real, I don't know any other way to describe it. Just incredible bicycle handle on the track. Just kind of a maniac, I guess, if you will, on the, on the track is Mark Whitehead. A close one. Number six, Tom Shuler is out. Tom Shuler is out. A razor between Brian McDonough and Tom Schuler. One more rider to come out this time, but we're going to be down to three to go, and it looks like Mark Whitehead's going to be the one coming out this time. Mark Whitehead's out. The three riders left in. It looks like Sean Wallace, Steve Haig, and Brian McDonough. Wallace and Haig, you're two leaders with 15 points each, and uh, one of these riders stands to good chance to be able to win this race and move up with 30 points. Really start to try and put this thing away. Brian McDonough trying to control two real speedsters. McDonough, Wallace now in, the, in control on the front, followed by McDonough and Haig. Sean Wallace starting a hard acceleration down the back straight. Brian McDonough trying to come over the top and Steve Haig coming over the top of Brian McDonough. It's going to be between Haig and Wallace.
three places are Haig with 30 points, Sean Wallace with 25, Brian McDonald with 18. Riders ready, one neutral out. It's all right to beat on those boards over there when they come around. This is the last race of the season. Oftentimes, the Omnium format is in this type of format. has been running here for a couple years. It's a real exciting format because a lot of times the whole race, the whole days where the racing comes down to the last lap of the last race. And who gets the most points on that lap is going to be the winner. Don't know if that's going to be the case today, but uh, we've seen it a lot of times down here at the Dick Lane Velodrome. Looking for all these riders to be together. And we got a start. Steve Hayes, your race leader on the front. 50 laps to go. 50 to go. Again, sprint every 10 laps. And something that's real important to think about. Mike Osborne on the front there. I think that's Sean Wallace in second. But something real important in the points race is that laps take precedence over points. So if any rider in the field were able to put a lap on the field, were able to gain a lap during this race on the field, and no other rider was able to do that, then that rider would be the winner of the race, even if they didn't have any points at all, because there was too many points left than anyone else. Now, if more than one rider happens to lap the field, then you go back to the points format to find out who the winner is. So you'd have to say two riders, up one lap, and then you go to the points to find out who the winner is. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a, a, a little bit of time that makes a lot of sense if you know what the point is. As the race goes on, what the procedures are, depending on how the race develops and shapes up. Ron Henson, the outspoken team now on the front. Uh, Ron, a real good criterium rider. Uh, not quite as well versed on the track, but an excellent criterion and road rider, Mr. Consistency, I guess if you could say anything about Ron Henson's racing is he's always there in the top 10 to finish a look any race, anywhere. Uh, Ron Henson, as I mentioned earlier, coming off of a broken hip this year from a track race and uh, doesn't have many points here in this race. This would be a good opportunity for him and some of the other riders out there to try and lap the field and win this Omnium. The first place to the Omnium gets $1,000. Now, that's not to mention the other money that they may have won through, maybe winning the Miss Nowers, or some of the other races out that they've been racing in today. First place in the Omnium is good for $1,000. I think it was counting down a little bit earlier down the prize list. Tenth place in the Omnium is $275. So these racers are racing for a lot of money out here. There's a $10,000 prize list for these Pro-Am riders. And this is courtesy of our sponsors, Exceed, the Center for Sports Medicine. One of the biggest prize lists for track racing in the country this year, besides some of the Sundance races. So this was kind of the uh, first race that got going and kind of got the Sundance people thinking about a big track series for this year to get our Olympic riders ready. We're down to 44 laps and things still, everybody collected together. We have uh, Tom Schuler on the front, the 711 team, Schuler with uh, eight points. And uh, a really serious track race, the board knows for his road and criterion racing, but uh, you don't see Tom on the track all that often, but if you put this guy on a bicycle, he's competitive. I don't care, a lot of endurance, and he can get out there on the front and, and go the distance. 50 laps may seem like a real long race, but it actually is 10 miles is how far it is. It's a 10 mile race and with all the sprints and the speed and the changing of the pace, it can seem like a real long race, but uh, these riders have a lot of endurance and 10 miles is not that far for them to be in the race. Thanks still with 30, so Sean Wallace moving up within three points of his teammate and race leader, Steve Hay. Andy Johnson now forcing the pace on the front. He's uh, Real good time trial rider. I've seen Andy Johnson uh, in the race in Spartanburg not too long ago pull the number that you're seeing him doing right now with his head down, leaning over the bars for 30 miles against a really strong field. Every single lap, he's able to uh, increase his lead. That's Andrew Woodruff, excuse me. 30 mile time trial. Did the same thing again the next day to come in second in the race. So uh, a lot of a lot of endurance and speed here for Andy Woodruff. Brian McDonough, you know, one of the Sun Kyung riders in fourth position. 
37 laps to go in the points race. Again, if any of these riders are able to lap the field, they would be in the lead of the race. Regardless of if you had any of those six numbers, you can come up to the pavilion area and pick up your prize. Third and four laps to go, number 18 on the front now, that's uh, Dean Barrial. Followed by number three, Pete Antonovich on the front. Moving back to that couple of cycle works riders through. I believe that's going to be Jay Osborne and Steve Sperry from the cycle works team. They have about four or five of their teammates, some real good riders there, but uh, having a hard time out here. They used to uh, dominating some of the racing out here today, and there's such a high class of the field out here with the Sung Kyung team, the 7 team, Bob Livingston and Brian McDonough for Bud Light, uh, Mark White. Real speedsters out there on the track. Race leader, uh, again, unofficially, is still Steve Hay with 30 points, but Sean Wallace has 27, and there he goes on one of those patented wind up. England, a professional for the Sung Kyung SKC team, showing how it's done. Picking up a big five-point sprint there. So, again, we're going to unofficially, we're going to move him into the lead with 32 points. Got Steve Haig with 30 points, and... Uh, Unofficially, we've got Sean Wallace moving up with 32 points. Tom Schuler now on the front. Steve Haig in pursuit. He doesn't want to see these top places anymore. Now we're going to our horsepower up here. We have Schuler, Livingston, McDonough, and Wallace up at the front. Steve Haig powering it through a hole in the front, turning the afterburners on, and uh, really motoring around this track. 28 laps to go, Steve Haig looking over his shoulder. Somebody's hollering at him to lap the field. They want to see Haig lap the field. Oh, he's going to try and do it by himself, or uh, uh, some of these other riders are going to try and help out. Andy Woodruff, uh, or I think maybe that's Mike Hatton in the cycle work in third place there. Things really picking up. Steve Haig still in the front. The drop's really down low there, followed by Andy Woodruff, Mike Hatton. Here comes Jay Osborne, Tom Schuler, Matt Chambers, and Mark Whitehead. Those six riders going around. This guy's going to link up. It looks like these six riders are going to link up with Steve Haig, and they're going to add a lot of fuel and a lot of horsepower to that front group. Got about a 50-meter lead over the rest of the field, and... Watch the train pull out here as they look over the shoulder, get everybody together and start taking nice moves. Yeah, it's on the front. Starting to lap the field. This group of seven riders away now with about a 50 meter or so lead on the rest of the field, looking to try and lap the field. Now they have to catch the main field, the back of the main field, in order to be considered a lap ahead. 25 laps to go. Matt Chambers now. Followed by Mark Whitehead, Andy Woodruff. Then it's going to be Steve Haig, Steve Sperry, Jay Osborne, Ron Henson from Outspoken Sport motoring on up. Riders not working quite as smoothly together as it looks like they could be. Brian McDonough. Get back in there, Mike. Number four, they're moving up. John Wallace sitting on the front of the uh, about five or six riders there going through this time. The field's starting to kind of explode. We've got three groups of riders. Lead group of riders is coming into the home straight now. This is the lead group of riders on the track with 23 to go being led through by 7-Eleven's Tom Schuler. Those side of the riders take a turn in the front, pull up to the high side of the track and drop back in somewhere in the field wherever they've got room to drop in. It takes a lot of energy to stay on the front of that field by yourself. Those two are strong. Jay Osborne now on the front, followed by Andy Woodruff. Some of 
We have Sean Wallace and Bob Livingston, a couple of real speedsters there in kind of no man's land. Notice, notice the, the gap now is up to almost a half lap lead, not quite a half lap. With a point sprint coming up. Matt Chambers on the front, followed by Whitehead, Schuler, and Hayes. Point sprint coming up again. Steve Haig being able to outmaneuver Mark Whitehead down the back straight, and it's going to be Haig and Whitehead. Steve Haig really crashing on the pedal up there. Steve Haig going to pick up five points. Keep it scoring. We're out of the we've got to see something by Steve Haig. going to move back into first place with 35 points. His teammate Sean Wallace with 32. Trying to keep this uh, unofficially as soon as we get uh, the, the results from our officials, I'll let you know what we've got. But it looks like in first place now, back in first place, is Steve Haig. And in second place, is going to be his teammate, Sean Wallace. Come on, Mike. Interesting thing here is that Sean Wallace is uh, almost a half lap down on his teammate. And these guys, Steve Haig and uh, the breakaway group on the back stretch now, are in a good position to be able to make up a lap on the field. They've got 18 laps to go to be able to catch the rest of the field. Now, if they were able to do that, then Steve Haig would uh, obviously... Done in, Mike, done in! Else does. He's got 35 points, and he would also be one lap ahead of the rest of the field, or essentially one lap ahead of his teammate, Sean Wallace. talking to Steve a little bit earlier today, and he said he'd sure like to win this one. Sean Wallace is the 87 winner. He's the winner of the 87 East Point Grand Prix Final. His name Pick is up. the Grand Prix Cup. Every year, add the winner's name to the Cup. So far, it's got one name on it, Sean Wallace, but uh, Steve Haig looks like he wants to unseat his teammate there and make sure his name goes on the Cup as the 88 winner. Winner of the Cycle Works jersey, take a look at your tickets, 195030. 195030, win one of the Cycle Works racing jerseys. John Wallace looks uh, really anxiously looking across the track there to monitor the progress of those, uh, that big breakaway group of riders there, but uh, as long as he's able to keep the pace up and uh, maybe as best as possible trying to limit his losses, hopefully be, be able to try and get some room and, and gain contact with that field of riders. They're really moving around strong now. Hang on. I guess so. It all boils down to interpretations to a certain extent, but the lead group of riders coming through the, the line right now, the start finish line, are going to say that the main field of riders is not the three riders across the track right now. It's going to be the front, the group of riders coming through the start finish line now is what's <laughs> left of the main group of riders. Thirteen laps to go. Thirteen to go. Hang on, Mike. Hang on, Mike. Three riders, but I don't think that's going to be considered the field. I think the main field of riders is still the ones that are coming through. Just came through the start finish line, and the leaders on the track are coming through the start finish line now. These are the leaders on the track being led through by Matt Chambers. They're the largest group of riders. They're trying to look to pick up a lap on the rest of the field. Don't let them you. Get back in now. Get down there. Twelve riders in this lead group now coming down to the line, and these are the riders here that are in contention for the point sprint. And the $50 frames, 50, 30, 40, and $10. Brian McDonald leading out the sprint, followed by Tom Schuler. Brian McDonald coming around the curve and down the straightaway with Tom Schuler on his wheel. 
And it looks like it's going to be Brian McDonough followed by Schuler and Hayes. Unofficially there, I've got Steve Haig moving, picking up two more points with 37 points. We've got Brian McDonald with 26 points. And I think we have Sean Wallace, uh, again, this is unofficial with 32 points. Nine to go, nine laps to go, and this thing is really winding up now. We, this big group of riders going down the back straight now by the Giordana is uh, got the, this other field of riders in their same straightaway. That's, that's when the team hunt's going to be with the 3 or 4 team hunt's going to be there. Attaboy, Mike! Seven to go. Everything's evil. Out of boys. Jay Osborne motored away now. Come on, Mike, stay in the money. Go, right, so it looks like Jay Osborne, uh, the way we're going to call it from here, it's up to this. It's kind of an official thing, I guess you would say, whether or not they're going to consider the leaders gaining a lap or the losers leading a lap, losing a lap, and I think it all boils down to the same. Jay Osborne, the way we're going to have a score from here is going to be the only one. Out of boy, Jay. Out of boy, Mike. Should now at this point be the leader in the Omnium. He's going to move through the field, it looks like, and uh, maybe try to go up to the front. Andy Woodruff, I believe it is, sitting off the back. He's going to try and get contact up in the front. Jay's up. Andy Woodruff looking to move up. Now we're going to have Ryan McDonough, Tom Schuler, Steve Egg, Ron Henson, Steve, uh, Mike Madden, Matt Chambers, and uh, Mark Whitehead moving up into the field. They're not, all of them aren't quite up yet. This, again, uh, this is why you have five officials and chief scorers and chief judges. They have to sort all this out. But it looks like to me that big group of riders, most of them have gotten in contact with the main field except for these last three. Matt Chambers and the Stars of Christ, Mark Whitehead and Mike Hatton. These three riders get to the back of the field. They'll be considered also one lap ahead. And then we go back to the points format to find out who the winner is going to be. So it looks like uh, it's the way we're going to be calling it from here. Steve Haig has got 37 <laughs> points and one lap. And a boy. What, Jay? Sean Wallace being, uh, I believe, in second place with the points of 32 points, but he did not gain a lap when all the rest of those riders gained a lap. So all the riders that gained a lap will be ahead of, ahead of the riders who did not gain a lap regardless of what their points are. Two laps to go. It looks like we have something like nine or ten riders to lap the field. So there's going to be a nine or ten laps riders with one lap up on the field. Come on, Mike. Everybody's screaming. Go, Jay. Some of the local riders really screaming for them. They're going to get the bell this time around to see who's going to win the points race. And we're going to be giving the flowers away. That's going to be Andy Wimmer on the front. He's very